Hi everyone, welcome back to Banjo Tooie. I'm starting out this video the exact same way I started out the previous one at the Isle of Hags. I think I've started out quite a few videos in this series like this actually. Let me grab this. Oh, let's not then. I'm going to let these uh, change to clockworks and then grab them just because I'm going to need a few in this segment. Hopefully I can get this before it disappears. Okay, I, I did. Yeah, I had six before. That's fine. So let me just jump back over to the cliff top. We're going to go and do the rest of Hailfire Peaks in this video. And by the time I'm done with it, we should ideally have 900 notes, which is all the notes in the game, plus 90 jiggies, which is all the nine, all the jiggies in the game. So that's going to be great. This first like minute is pretty much pointless. There was no reason for me to show it, and yet I've gone and done it anyway. So something I wanted to point out that I noticed, um, obviously when I finished the uh, the last video, I haven't left the N64 on. I have turned it off since then. Also, what am I doing? I don't want to do this yet. No, I do. Never mind. Uh, the thing I want to point out is, if I go back here to where Wombuzz is, the alien that I freed from the ice is actually captured in it again. Um, that's why I was saying that I didn't leave the N64 on. That's like The fact that I've turned it off has, uh, has reset this, as you can see here. But um, it doesn't reset the fact that I hatched that other alien so it's kind of weird how it keeps track of some things, but not others. But let's have a look at this corpse in the meantime, because he's dead, by the way. That, that is a dead child in this E-rated Nintendo 64 game that's on the surface very cute. Anyway, oh god, that boss though. We're going to finally take care of him in this video. Can't wait to show that. So I'm going to have to go and get Mumbo to revive the baby alien. This is going to be the last time I'm going to need him in this entire playthrough. Which is great, obviously, because he's just been a nuisance. So, for the last time, I'm going to say yes here, and after dealing with the glitchy camera there, I'll just pop through, back to Wombas. She doesn't complain at you, except for the first time you go through here, so... A little bit of dialogue I don't have to put up with. And, uh, and yeah, this is going to be the last Ecombokum of the run through here, so... I'm trying to think if there's like much, many more cutscenes. I know there's like one associated with the aliens after I f uh, like fix their issue, but I think after that, it's uh, obviously excluding boss fights. It's pretty much nothing but gameplay. I mean, that's basically been true for this whole game. I really shouldn't be complaining about it. I've done playthroughs on bloody Zelda games where, you know, in, in some cases there's like six minutes of cutscene, like the light arrow cutscene in Ocarina of Time, although I don't even remember if I edited that out, or if I even showed it, I really don't remember at all. I know I did like a weird kind of restricted playthrough on that one, where I did the dungeons in reverse order. Ugh, I don't know. I feel like it's something I might revisit in the future and expand upon. But for now, uh, that's two of the three aliens done. I don't need Mumbo for anything else, I'm just going to go back and switch to BK. And the other alien is like the easiest of the three to get, but it's like fairly hidden, I guess. So, just going to run back through here and switch back to someone who moves a lot quicker than he does, which is why I like it more. Just jump back into his chair. So, I'm never going to have to see him again for the rest of the playthrough unless he's in like a cutscene at the end, which I'm sure he is. Don't know why I came out of talent trot there, that was a waste of my time. Anyway, I'm also not going to transform into anything else in this level. Like I said in the last one, the snowball has exactly one use. Two technically, but only one for me. But um, there is still another Wumba transformation coming up. Anyway, two out of three of the alien babies are there. The other one is just behind Wumba's over here. Really easy to get to. It's best just to take the damage really and, and not have to do the slow shimmy along that thing. So this is another one that's buried under the ice. For some reason this one didn't die. It managed to survive. Maybe it's a little bit older and smarter. I don't know. But now that all three of them are back to their father, uh, there's nothing left for me to do in that side quest. It's not really a side quest, is it? It's more like a main quest. Um, little Jinjo doll there, that's kind of cute. But um, eventually when these guys go up to their spaceship, they're going to leave behind a jiggy for me, and I can go and pick that up. And the global that's right next to me is the last global of the game as well. So I'll be picking that up just as soon as I get control. Which wasn't as long as I thought it would be. Where did it go? I mean, the way these guys move is like RNG, it's randomness, so there's some interesting global lore for you. Anyway, 
God, that boss really is getting annoying though. Like, it's stressful thinking that he's going to kill me. Uh, I think I'm going to go and kill him in a second, actually, honestly. There's there's something I want to take care of over here first, but after that, it's, it's lights out for Chilly Willy. So, a couple of notes here that I avoided before, because it's just a little bit quicker to get them in Banjo, I guess. Only ten more to get after this. So here's uh, here's Mildred. I executed her husband earlier. I'm going to do the same to her now. Because she has a Jinjo that I want, which is the last Jinjo of the game. Which uh, also gives me another Jiggy, which is great. So, going inside here to Bobby's... Bobby... Boggy's <laughs> Igloo. Um, I can give him that fish that I got from the water earlier. And he is going to do what he did in the first game to those who have played it. And choke up a jiggy, so that's like twice that he's done this. Hopefully it's going to land straight on where I am. Yeah, it looks good. Perfect. There's a little bit of dialogue you can't skip here. Also, I'm certain he got a lot fatter between the games. Like, a lot taller and a lot fatter. He was like, kinda almost not that much bigger than Banjo in the first one. Anyway, before I leave this place, I'm going to have a quick look downstairs just to show off what's going on. Also, easy there. You're probably going to break your ice couch. Where's the downstairs bit? Here it is. Okay, so here's where the kids live. Um, in the first, there's Freeze Easy Peak where they used to live. In the first game, it was three sons. I think I might have mentioned this before, but like I said, I took two and a half years off from this game, so I don't really know. Uh, but now one of them's had a sex change, apparently. So, it's interesting. Polar bear lore for you. I'm not going to listen to these kids. That one was an accident. Also, nice picture of Banjo and Kazooie there. Anyway, there's the sled from the first game as well. That feels like if you run at it just right, you'll fall out of bounds. I mean, look at this. It would have absolutely no use whatsoever, but it's just something to think about. Anyway, let's head back outside, and I think now I'm going to go and take care of the boss. There is something that else that I need to do around this area, but I'm going to leave it until the boss is dead, just because he's going to kind of get in the way otherwise. So, just jumping over this. Uh, I'm going to have to go and get those claw clamor boots from the guy that says bounce a lot. Really weird. I guess because he kind of jumps away. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Someone in the comments said they think he says ouch, and that is like, I'm sorry. There's there's definitely like an S sound or like a, a CE sound at the end of the word that he says in that little cutscene. Then it's definitely bounce, or perhaps bones with an English accent. I don't know. Anyway, just don't hit me. I don't want to lose my claw clamor boots. Also, look how much it lags when I run up this slope. That's crazy, right? Anyway, don't hit me. I should be good as long as he doesn't snipe me on this. This is the second time I have to worry about this in this playthrough. I think he's done all of his hits, so we're cool. So yeah, like I mentioned before, it is a little bit regretful that I didn't get to show off both boss fights, but they are both effectively exactly the same, but still opposites in a way, which I'll elaborate on in a sec. Um, one thing that's going to help me in this fight is the fact that I have Dragon Kazooie because she has infinite fire eggs, as you can see. They're not... They're, I mean, okay, we can't see because it went and collected those ones, but they're not depleting. Well, you can take my word for it. I've still got 50, so... So here's Chilly Willy, the, the brother, I guess, of Chilly Billy, who I fought off-screen. Uh, always found this a bit weird. Willy and Billy are both short for William, so they both have the same name. Anyway, I'm just going to shoot fire eggs into this thing. And, uh, you know, it's going to take me, like, maybe three or four cycles. There's nothing too hard about this boss. Between when you shoot the eggs to him, all he does is this thing with his tongue. It's really easy to avoid. I mean, I probably will take damage from it at some point, just because I suck at games, but it's, it's yeah, like that. Uh, it's not really going to hinder me in any serious way. So the way that this is, like, opposite from the other one is pretty obvious. You just shoot ice eggs into the other one. Aside from that, it's exactly the same fight. There's, there's nothing that's harder about it. Maybe I'm wrong though, maybe one of them is harder. Maybe I just haven't noticed it yet. But yeah. I don't think uh, it makes much of a difference. Just try and get as many in here as I can. I think if you time this like better, you can reduce the number of cycles, but I don't really care a whole lot about this. It's not a big deal to me. It's kind of reminiscent of like the, the final fight from Banjo-Kazooie, for those who have played that, where you have to like shoot eggs into the Jinjo machine or whatever it is. It's going to take one more cycle for sure. That's unfortunate. Whatever, it's not a big deal though. I think I've kind of gone around the whole perimeter at this point, but... Since I didn't show the other fight, I think it's fair that this one takes a little bit longer. 
Because, yeah, those things don't, like, come back up again after you use them, so... Yeah, this is probably the longest this fight's taken me in a long time. But... It was still kind of quick, right? So he's going to go away, and I'm, I'm right next to the Jiggy, so that's great. I'm also right next to the exit, so I did go around the whole thing. Come on, Willy, get on with it. Why is it taking him so long? Cutscenes, right? Love them. Best part of video games. I don't like playing games, I just like watching stuff after I've spent, like, what, £50 on this game when it came out, or whatever the hell. I'm definitely not bitter. Anyway, I've got that jiggy, and now I can get this one that's uh, behind this uh, window over here that I mentioned before. Um, it's much easier to get this when you're both when you have both Banjo and Kazooie with you, because like when you go into first person mode, you're slightly taller than when you're just Kazooie, and it just makes it a lot easier to line up. Because this one's kind of a tricky one to get, but we've seen this kind of trick a lot of times in this playthrough already. You can see there's like a little seam between the, the glass and the wall there, and if I just line it up just right, I should be able to shoot eggs straight through it. I can't really tell if that's working or not. This might take me a few attempts. If it does, I'm probably going to edit it. I don't think there's any sense in showing it every single try, but I'm going to show what I'm doing right now just so you can see the level of frustration that this sometimes brings. Uh, trying to line it up is kind of hard as well. See, like, some of them did seem like they went through, or at least one of them did. It's sometimes hard for me to tell if I should be more to the left or more to the right. I think this looks good, though. There's, like, a clear gap in there. So let's see if we can get it this time. I can't imagine doing this with like a Hori mini pad, which I played some of this series with that, and it's got like a GameCube stick on it, even though it works on N64, and it's just like really, well you know what the GameCube stick's like, you fucking tilt it to the right and it shoots off to the right at fucking light speed or whatever. Anyway, I'm just stalling for time here because I'm obviously sucking at this, but I think my position's bad, I'll move a little bit more to the right. Okay, this looks a little bit wider, hopefully I can get it in this time. But yeah, like like I said, I'm not gonna... If this takes like much longer, I'll just cut to when I actually do get it, because... I'm really not good at this one. This is one of the, the more tricky ones I find. I don't really know why that is. It doesn't look on the surface like it should be any different. Maybe if I go closer to it. Okay, and more to the left. That looks good, right? You can totally see that there's a massive gap there. Yeah, this is gonna work. So I guess that was all I had to do, just go closer to it. And having infinite fire eggs is good for both the boss fight and this, because I can tell over and over again that it's the right angle. So I'll shoot a clockwork through there. And in the amount of time that it took me to do that, I probably should have just gone through Ice Equal Grotto and gotten it the legit way, but... I mean, whatever, right? Just the ground pound trick again and fail it, I guess. Get back up there, stupid bear. Alright, do the ground pound trick so I don't take any damage. And I'm going to head back to where Boggy's igloo was now, because there is still something else that I can get there. So I think I'll just warp to where Wumba is. Quickest way to get there. Probably could have just ran there, but whatever. It's easier to keep track of where I am if I do this. So the other jiggy that I want to grab for now is the one that's over here. This is the one, you can see there's like a... There's like train tracks in the background there. That's where you're supposed to take the train from the fire side into the ice side. And that's the thing that I mentioned before where you use Gobby and like cool the train down and all this shit and hit all those switches with the snowball and whatever. All of it completely avoidable. If you just go over here, you can do the same kind of trick I was doing. The way I like to do this is to kind of run against this part of the opening here and have it so that Banjo's right here one that's on the left right now kind of lines up with it and that's sort of roughly where you want to be and just going to first person mode and if I have a look down between this part here and the ground there's a little bit here where you can actually shoot an egg through uh, it might take me a few attempts to get this I think my position isn't great I'm going to move slightly more to the left but I've, okay that's too much to the left a little bit more to the right yeah, this looks a lot better. I do think that this one is easier than the than the other trick that I did a minute ago. At least I've had more luck with it in practice. Maybe if I move it down a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell when it's really going through, though. Because it's, it's a weird one, this. We're doing it, like, downwards, whereas before it was always something on a wall. Like, some of these are going through, for sure, right? 
So let me just pull out my clockworks and drop one through and it takes me straight through to where the train tracks are. Skipping the entire train sequence in Hailfire Peaks, I can pick up this jiggy and then just kill myself and go back. And that's everything on the ice side, there's nothing else for me to get over here so at this point I'm just going to jump down here and head up to the warp and go back to the fire side because there's one more jiggy I can grab over there. Well actually there's two but there's one that's like in the outside fire area. So I'll warp to the upper section of it and there is a glitch that I can do here to skip the entire next section. Um, I'm not going to do it, it's not really worth it I don't think. But I'll point it out when I get there. For the moment I'm going to switch to Banjo and I don't like the fact that I don't have full health so we're going to take a nap. That was a guess by the way which C button to press, I can never remember but it was C right if you care for some reason. So jumping over here, if I had both Banjo and Kazooie here I could sort of jump off this ledge and flutter back towards it and clip inside it and go all the way around here like while still being inside the ledge and, jo and drop down and there'd be like well you can see there's a Cheeto page behind like a grating there's a jiggy below it I could fall inside that but it's like kinda hard to do I don't think it's worth it I'd rather show off the sort of intended way because I'm still gonna cheese that really with uh, like the double jump and all this stuff so I'll drop straight down here do this so I don't take too much damage or any damage at all. I can go over to the banjo switch which is here. So this is kind of a long puzzle, you know, you've got to do a lot of back and forth between the characters but if you know where the switches are and you know about the double jump and how to like not die when you do it then it's not really that bad. So I'll switch back to Kazooie now and on my way to her switch I will make a quick detour uh, down here and pick up the last notes of the run. So haven't been in this room yet. Let's just drop down and grab these two little clusters here. And there we go, 900 notes. That's everything there is in that department in the game. So that's cool, obviously. So cause it, there's a jiggy in there, by the way. That you'd, you'd sort of fall uh, behind the grating if you were doing that glitch that I mentioned earlier that I decided not to do. So her switch, in order to get to that, I'm going to come in here. And uh, I don't really remember where it is, just offhand. I'm going to have to have a look around. I think I just dropped down to the right. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that sounds good. I can just hold A so that I don't take too much damage. Also, I think I just fucked it there. I just went way past it, didn't I? Okay, what am I going to do? Oh, that's not an issue. I forgot. I have the glide move now. So I can just do this and go straight back in. God, that thing's broken. Okay, so <laughs> attempt two, I guess. Now that I actually know where the thing is, uh, I'll just flutter all the way over to it and safely land in here. And at this point, I'll switch back to Banjo because the jiggy is pretty much exposed, I think, now. This is the one that opens, right? Not really sure. Nope, it's not. Okay, there's one more switch to hit with Banjo first. That's fine, though. So, back as Banjo. Where do I want to go now? Just straight left, I guess. I think I'm going to have to climb some of this, though. You always want to go at it perpendicular to the... Or, sorry, parallel to the to the ledge. Otherwise, you won't grab it. Like, when you do that double jump thing. But this should open up the last panel. And, uh... Okay, kind of misleading there that it showed that bit first. But there's the jiggy. I can drop down and get that in just a sec. Uh... How am I going to do this? I guess if I just do this, I should survive it, because I didn't have to jump out of it, so he didn't take damage. And then I've got that Jiggy, there's only two left to get. They're both very similar, but I think I'm going to kill myself first, so I'll just do that. This is going to bring me back to the split up pads, and Kazooie will be right next to me, because it resets her position when you die as well. Which is great, obviously. So. We actually have almost everything in this stage, there's just a few little loose ends that need to be tied up. I'm going to kill these guys, they've given me enough grief and I want them to suffer. God, they're making me suffer though. No, you got to come back out, come on, let's do it, let's finish this. God, why is it so hard to kill them? Jesus. just want to get on with stuff here. Anyway, 
I'm going to head inside this building over here because this is a train station. Like I mentioned before, you're supposed to use the train to get to that one jiggy that I got a couple minutes back. Uh, I skipped it using a cool glitch, but there is still something in here that I need despite that. So, honeycomb up there. Let's just use a clockwork to get it. And that would be the last honeycomb of the game. There's 25 of them. There's also 25 Cheeto pages, and we're just about to finish this one up as well. So heading back outside, we can just drop down and glitch through the grating covering the Cheeto page and grab that. So if I just jump over here, I'm probably going to have to take damage here, it's not a big deal though. The Cheeto page is actually just directly below me, so I can, okay, I guess we're going to take a small detour and just hang on to that and drop down here. If I just shoot an egg through this, I'll pick up the Cheeto page. So there we go, that's uh, I don't know why I paused, that's basically everything in the level. There's one more jiggy to get, uh, the camera really sucks here, I really have a hard time telling what I'm doing at the moment. Hopefully I'm not going to die, okay I didn't. So I'll head inside here, this should be the Colosseum, which is going to allow me to get the last couple jiggies of the game. Uh, God, I think someone's going to snipe me as soon as I go over here. You'll be able to hear a Jinjo or a Minjo, I should say, over there. It's a white one, so we automatically know it's not one that we need. Because there's only one white one in the game, but... Even ignoring that, I have all the Jinjos collected at this point. So, this tunnel over here leads back to the first level of the game. So this is kind of interesting. The very last Jiggy of the game... Or I should say, the very last transformation of the game... Is the one that you're supposed to do first. I think that's a... A beautiful kind of irony. Just it's, it's great that I've done it in this order. Anyway, I'm gonna finally go in here. I'm gonna use one of the three globals that I haven't spent yet to um, to transform into the stony, which is a completely awful thing to move around as, which you'll see in a second. But um, just get in there. This is gonna allow me to unlock the last two jiggies of the game. One of them is in this stage, and the other one's back in Hailfire Peaks. Now, this thing just moves like this normally, but like if you press B, he, da he does like a dive, but then he like pauses for ages at the end, and there's nothing you can do about it, so what you want to do is kind of time it, so you do it straight into a loading zone, so you don't have to deal with the delay. It's the only way to make it worthwhile. Anyway, there's not really much for me to do in my um, temple, I just kind of want to go to... How much health have I got? Did it refill? It did. I just want to go back to the Colosseum, which is right in here, the kickball lobby. Still not really sure what kickball is. I mean, is it just the same as football, except you shoot stuff into your own goal? That seems to be the distinction that this game has taught me anyway. Anyway, so there's three rounds that I have to do here. None of them are particularly hard, at least not on this stage. The ones in Hailfire Peaks are a bit worse. But, um... Yeah, all I'm going to do is pick up these little things that appear around the field and try and get the highest score by shooting them into my own goal. And it's going to take a little while, um, and it's not really that interesting, but it's also not difficult, so I'm not really complaining. As you can see, these guys are really slow, they get a lot quicker in the other, in the other stage. But, um, you know, the worst part of this is just like how long it takes, really. There's, uh, there's just not, not a lot of challenge here, at least not in this early match, but... Oh, that was nice. That was some good luck, I guess. But I'm obviously going to win this anyway. My score is like completely blowing theirs out of the water right now, so... Let's just try and get it higher just for the sake of it. If one appears near me, I'll be able to shoot that in, but I think... I think we're probably done. I'll fire it over, but it doesn't count. Even if it goes in after the timer stops, it doesn't actually count. But yeah, I completely wrecked all the other guys there and uh, this opens up the semi-finals. Not sure how I actually qualify for the quarter-finals because I haven't played any kickball so far but just automatically get in there. It's just a really small tournament. I'm not gonna listen to these guys, they just kinda taunt you and sort of go on about your shorts and stuff. So the only difference with this one is that there's now these other balls that you can shoot into their, guilt, into their goals and that'll actually reduce their score by two or by one every time you do it so the guys have gotten quicker as well this time so that that guy on the left there is 
doing pretty well. I'm going to probably have to keep my eye on him. But like before, the goal is just to, to end up with the highest score. Oh, damn. Okay, I'll try and quickly shoot that into mine and shoot this one over here. Yeah, I think there's going to be no issue with this. I think we're going to be just fine. So, yeah, I can probably just stop moving right now, actually, and be totally fine. I'm just going to go and hang out and save my goals in this corner over here. Why not, right? Nice and easy. So, all that's left for my Hem Temple is the, f the final match, and you've got to realise, you know, this is a jiggy they expect you to get at the start of the game. That's why it's so kind of mindless and easy to do. Uh, like I mentioned, the one in Hailfire Peaks is a little bit worse. But, um, let's just wait for them to stop taunting me, and I feel like this is exactly the same, except now there's bombs on the, on the pitch as well. Yeah, so all these things do is kind of stun the other characters, and as you saw there, like, they are a bit more aggressive than they were before. So who do I need to watch out for? The guy on the right looks pretty dangerous right now. I uh, just want to reduce the scores as much as I can. So, chuck this in here, chuck this in here. I mean, it is getting harder, you can tell, but it's still mostly, mostly okay. Nope, get in there. I've got to reduce this guy. God, I might actually lose this. Um, I'm still in the lead right now, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Oh god, I'm, I'm going to lose. Damn. Okay, I guess everything I said before about how easy it is, you can just disregard that. Do I want to play again? Not really, but I need to... Ugh, whatever. It's, it's a short match, so I don't really mind doing it more than once. Okay, so, same as before. Let's just see if we get better luck. I mean, where these things spawn, I think, is completely luck, so... Oh god, no, this is not good. Don't take my ball. Ah, oh, and they break when they go against the wall as well, that sucks. So, who do I have to watch out for? The one at the bottom seems like the biggest threat right now. I'll try and reduce his score. Right, can I... Oh, okay, well, I managed to... No, I didn't manage to get one in. Uh, God, am I going to lose this again? I really hope not. It's looking a little bit more optimistic this time, though, than it did the last time. So, who do I need to watch out for? This guy over here, because he's about to score again. Okay, I think I've, I think I've won this time. Just be safe and get another two points in there. So there was nothing difficult about that. I feel like I performed just as well there as I did in my first field attempt, but whatever. So there's the last Jiggy of my um, temple, bringing me up to 89. There's still one more to grab back in Hailfire, so I'm going to head back there, take the stony there, through this passage that I opened before. And uh, I hope you liked what you just saw, because this is pretty much exactly the same, except the gimmick is now that you have to have the lowest score possible. So you, this is more like football, kind of. You want to like shoot it into the other guy's goal. Anyway. None of it's really that hard. It's, it's definitely more enjoyable, though, than the last one. There's just uh, more stuff that you can do, I guess, to like win. And it just makes it more fun. The pitch looks like it's falling apart as well. There's no grass or anything, just a cracky floor. Anyway, eventually it's going to let me control my character. Okay, so I'll just chuck these into here. I mean, if these guys mostly just fight amongst themselves, then I'm pretty much okay. And I feel like that really does make this one a bit easier. They, like, none of them are... Okay, that guy did. Most of them aren't shooting into mine, though. I just don't want to... Don't want to... Oh, damn. I've got a, a score greater than zero, which is not what I wanted. But it follows the same kind of pattern where, like in this match, there's none of the red balls that can, like, take the scores down. And then the second one there will be. And then the third one there will be bombs. And it's just, it doesn't really... I'm not even going to do anything else. I'm just going to sit in here. Just hang out behind my goalposts because there's nothing else I have to worry about, really. They can't damage me any longer. Okay, so that's one third of that one done. Just two more almost identical matches, although the guys, I think, do get faster, like I said. Okay. It is kind of funny how, like, this stuff is the last couple jiggies that I'm getting, because I feel like it's some of the dullest stuff, <laughs> at least to watch. I mean, maybe if you're, like, I mean, I'm having, like, a moderate level of fun doing it, but, yeah, so, same as before. 
Oh, actually, no, this one's totally different. I'm just shooting into my own goals here because uh, you start off with 50. You still have to have like the lowest score possible. Can I intercept that? I guess I probably could have, but I just sucked at it. But yeah, um, there's nothing much to say here. It's, it, this is more like the first kind of games where you're just trying to shoot stuff into your own goals. Uh, God, I mean, these guys are like, they're really close to me in terms of score. Um, they might be closer than I thought trying to do this. But I don't really mind showing it more than once. Oh God, all the... Okay, I'm still in the lead, and by lead I mean I have the lowest score. But, um, I gotta make sure it stays like that. Okay, yeah, I did. That, was, that wasn't that was actually as bad as I thought it was. Uh, the one in the bottom was almost catching up with me, or catching down with me, but he didn't. So that's cool. You can still hear that Minju over there. I'm not gonna bother. I'm not gonna give him the time of day. So here's the last one. Um... So that one we started out with like 50 and we had to get it as low as possible. I think this one we probably start with zero, but it's more like there's a mixture of balls on the pitch. So let's just let's just do it. So I can yeah shoot these into sweet for him to do that and fire that in there. I, mean, I guess that the best way to do this one, or like the safest way, is just to constantly guard your own thing. But like I think if you if you draw with someone else, then like you still lose because you know video game logic and that so who's gonna give him one because he's like doing the best right now uh, actually I'm, I'm losing right now this isn't good I need to really lower my score really quickly um, if I fire this wow oh, okay I get hit by a bomb I'm gonna have to redo this one 100% it's guaranteed yeah definitely can I restart it no of course not I, I gotta go do it nice and slowly like this Oh, that's unfortunate. I was second there, but whatever. We'll obviously get it this time. And if we don't, I'll just edit until I do. So, in the end, I'm always going to win. Jesus, come on. Christ, it took so long to start there. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't feel like they're all ganging up on me, which in a lot of things in video games, it often feels like that. Like, the, like in racing games and stuff, you know, they... They obviously all try to beat you without really focusing on each other, and that kind of sucks. But in this one, I think they're all they're all doing it quite evenly. Shit. On that red one, shoot it in here. Yeah, I'm doing much better this time though. Let me grab this. They don't really seem to go for the red ones at all. Maybe that's why they why they suck so much. He says doing it for the second time. Anyway, I think I think we'll be okay this time. Especially with all these extra shots. Okay, cool. Down to two. That's not too bad. But, um... Yeah, that's the, the kickball thing is now finished. So, when this guy eventually stops talking. And this really long cutscene eventually stops. I can get the last jiggy of the game. Bringing me up to a total of 90. Let's just prove that we actually have done everything at this stage. So, I'll start from here and work backwards. As you can see, everything is complete. Don't look at the times. <laughs> because they're really bad. But, I mean, this isn't a speedrun. But if it was, it'd be a really bad one. Anyway, everything's done. I haven't spent all my globals, but I've managed to get everything that there is in the game. Here's the, the totals. There's 70 of them. Bit of a weird number, but I guess it's not really any weirder than 24 moves or 45 jing jinjos. So, I guess we're pretty much done with all the collecting in the game. All that's left is to go and fight the final boss. And I think we will do that in the next video. So, let me just save and quit. Even though, like I said before, the game auto-saves in some ways. But it's best to just have it, have it like that. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.